Previously on Sailing Rum Punch. We've been away with work for four months. I got my gloves on. I am ready. We finally finished sanding a huge section of the interior of the boat. Pretty much finished our first sanding of the entirety of this space. And despite finding a crack or two, we weren't going to let that dampen our moods. It's all part of the job, isn't it? It's all part of the job. Let's crack on, mate. We filled in some unnecessary holes with epoxy and got ready to say another proper goodbye to our boat. <laughs> ready? Go. Now, we thought we'd pause boat work for 30 seconds and show you what our four months look like. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Dolphin Sanctuary Kayak Tours. We are back. How many times have we said that? Again. <laughs> This time we're back, back. We're working in London, we're only down the road, and then our job finishes in six weeks, and then we've got nothing on. We are unemployed, not through choice, but through circumstance. So, as scary as it is, it's gonna give us plenty of time to get the boat ready to get in the water. Because we're freelance as well, we can pick up extra bits of work just to keep the bills going and you know, not being completely destitute, but um, it's really good to have a good, a good chunk of time to just dedicate ourselves to the boat. Finally, the issue we've had recently is that we've been coming back for one or two weeks at a time, and it always takes a little long to get started, get the flow, getting moving, and then by the time we get into it, we're time to pack up and leave again, and we never really get anything done. So about four days in the week, we'll have about five hours where we can just get up and solidly work on the boat. And that's six weeks and then we go boat full time. Look. While we've been away, we've had plenty of time to think about what we want to do with the boat. A lot of things have changed, design wise and the way we want to go about working. Basically with the boat, it's not surprising. There's no space whatsoever. Having workhorses and having a workbench set up in the middle of the boat takes up every little bit of space. Trying to get around it is extremely difficult and slows us down big time. So we have rented a small unit. It's an old stable and it was going for really cheap. So we've decided to turn it into a workshop. However, we do need to do some work on it. We need to put a little bit of insulation in there just because it is still freezing cold here. You know, we need to put probably about a week's worth of work into fixing it up, which is obviously takes it away from bow time. But again, I still think it's worth it. This is our storage units. Not much to see at the moment. Just got a box, but it's got so much potential. I think this is gonna be great. So I think if we have a long workbench here, Coffee corner. Very important. Shelving up here. All my junk from my storage unit we can just stack here. And put a little desk here so we can so Ellie can do some editing or we can do some like have a little electronics table. I think it's gonna be good. And then we have to if we try and keep as much space in the middle as possible and we can just work and dance. Don't put that in. And look, fairy lights. All along here <laughs> to make it pretty. I wasn't allowed to buy a ladder as you're talking about fairy light. They're important for <laughs> aesthetics. Welcome to our unit. So 
so far we've put some DPM down, we've put some roofing up so that it's nice and insulated. It's still a bit chilly in there and a bit damp, but hopefully now we're going into spring, it's going to be a lot better for us. All our wood's going to arrive here, all our materials are here, all our tools are stored here. And when we need anything, we just get a big box. We put all our tools that we need for the day in, put it in the car. It's a 15 minute drive to the boat from here. This is our engine, it's a Yanmar 3HM35. It gave us some issues when we brought it over from Portland. It had an oil leak and it overheated a little bit. So what I want to do is take it out of here and take it to our workshop. The inside of here is disgusting, so I really want to clean that out and paint it as well. But more importantly, I want to get the engine somewhere we can work on it over the summer and get it in tip-top shape. We need to get it out of the boat. That's going to be the main issue that we have. We're going to go and speak to the marina and to see how much it costs just for them to come in here, undo it all, take it out and crane it into the back of our car. Failing that, if it's too expensive or they don't do it, we are going to have to look at doing it ourselves, which is quite scary, but that's what this channel's all about. Next Tuesday, the engine's getting taken out, so this week is all about prep. We've been to the boat this morning and I've taken some measurements so that I can build a cradle. Uh, when the engine gets lifted out by the crane, we're going to place it in the cradle so we can stick it in the car and bring it back to the workshop. It's a lot more expensive for them to do everything. So we've taken it on ourselves to do everything ourselves as much as we can. So yeah, like you said, it's all about prep and we are prepping to basically disconnect the entire engine off the boat. If we wanted the marina to do everything for us, they've offered to come on the boat, unplug everything, take the engine out for us and get it all prepped. That'll cost about £500 and take a whole day. Whereas if we disconnect it ourselves, then we've, all we have to do is pay for the crane hire. And of course, learn how to become engineers and how to disconnect an engine. Not hard, right? Which is about £150, so it's a lot cheaper for us to do it ourselves. I've read the manual for the engine and I've read all about how to disconnect it and what needs to be disconnected. I wasn't too sure on what a lot of the things were that need to be disconnected. So we did get the marina mechanic on board and I basically went through the list with him and he showed me what to do. So we're in a very good place and we feel very confident that we can do it ourselves. We're in the workshop today, so I've got all the wood I need. So I'm gonna build the cradle so that we can transport the engine to the workshop safely. What are you gonna be doing? What am I gonna be doing? I am gonna be working on the supports for the new flooring. Before cutting into expensive wood, I'm going to be making templates out of cardboard so that we can practice scribing against the hull. Okay, so I have made and bodged together some cardboard templates for the, uh, for the floor supports. And here is a very makeshift sort of scribe. We will be calling it a selfie scriber. <laughs> That's terrible. And essentially what we will be doing is putting this in the bottom of the boat. And the bottom of this tool will be gliding along the bottom and scribing as we go to create the line that will be up and down and roller coastering up along the bottom of the boat and essentially this is just a practice so that when we do it with a wood right we practice it on some cardboard first so we don't mess it up this is my finished cradle for the engine um, it's got these for the feet to sit on and then the oil sump should fit in there. It's not very high tech, uh, but it is extremely sturdy, so it should be able to take the weight of the engine. It's only got to get us from the marina to here. It's a 15 minute drive, it's just so it's secure in the car. And then when we get it here, we'll have a more suitable mounting solution, shall we say. Wood. finished the floor supports I'm moving on to another project we think we found the holding tank we want but we're not quite sure how big it is or how it's gonna look in our in our heads and um, so I'm gonna build it out of cardboard again good old cardboard this is my new favorite thing to do 
So um, I have drawn it up as a little diagram here. Um, <laughs> it does come in a couple of sizes, so I am going to go for the bigger one just to see if it does fit. And if it doesn't, then I can just cut it down and make, it, make a smaller one. The idea with our design was that we wanted to move the tank into the heads to create more space as well as reducing it down to a more convenient size. No one needs a load of poo swelling around underneath you whilst you're trying to watch TV or read a book. This is my finished holding tank. Complete with its own... That, what do you call this? Access hatch. Access hatch. <laughs> you can't take off, but I'm not going to because it will destroy it. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. This is a 60 litre one, but I've drawn a line where the 40 litre one would finish. We don't think the 40 litre one is quite big enough. Well, Ben does, but it obviously means emptying it more often. So we'll see if the 60 litre tank fits, and if not, we'll go down to 40 litres and we'll just have to hold it in a few more times a day. We took these to the boat to see if the holding tank would fit and if scribing against the cardboard floor supports would work. Sadly, the holding tank was too big for our very small heads and the cardboard floor supports were too flimsy to practice with, so all in all, a little bit of a letdown. We'll just have to go back to the drawing board for where to put the holding tank and then we'll just have to be extra careful when cutting into our very expensive marine plywood. So this is what we're dealing with today. The engine, as you can see, the clutch side there is going to be coming out through this access hatch next week and to make that possible this needs to be completely empty so I'm going to take absolutely every single thing that I can out of this hatch we might end up putting another little tank in here or something but I'm looking forward to getting this completely cleared out and getting it painted and lights put in here so that we've got a really good system. I've been under the cockpit pulling out all the wires and cables. It was so many. I've taken out the battery isolator and the windless control, leaving these delicious holes in the side of the panelling. Um, I've disconnected all the cabling from the gas alarm and the solar controller and uh, I poured them through into the cockpit. It's lunchtime now and it's just started raining loads so I've taken the opportunity to come inside and have a sandwich. I've got really dirty hands but I'm hoping I won't get sick. And what have you been up to today? What? <laughs> I am editing. I am working very hard on Basically, one, two, three, four, and five. We've done a lot since, but they've been tweaked all the time and I need to keep tweaking them. So once I've done all that, then I think going ahead, going forward, it's going to be quicker and I can just bash them out. And can I ask why, why you're on the boat? Why am I on the boat? Why aren't you in the comfy, warm home or at the unit this with the big TV? This is my home. Um, just a bit of, you know, I'm just here for moral support. It's just the dust. I think if we gave it a clean, we wouldn't be breathing in dust and fiberglass and getting witchy. I like being on the boat, make, make you feel like I'm here for a reason. Yeah, I like <laughs> that. I'm just trying to get myself in the zone of like, I love the boat. I don't like it. This is, this is where you're going to spend most of your time when we, yeah. we're out at sea and this will be on my anchor. Table. And... Okay, rain did stop play for a little while. So we've had some lunch and now we're going to crack on. It has just started raining again typically as I come outside and took the hatch up but I'm just going to carry on and if it gets too bad I'll stop again. But we need to get through. I need to get all this out today. pipage that runs under here and with me cutting it out I have cut a feed from the chlorifier which is still completely full of water so I've made a siphon an accidental siphon so I'm just having to drain that which is very time consuming but I am having to drain that before I can continue on putting all these pipes out 
I've managed to get absolutely everything soaking wet, so the bilge has probably got loads of water in it again now, and uh, the engine's wet, because it's going to make it really fun to work on. Hooray! Ben cleared out everything under the cockpit, ready to tackle the epic job of disconnecting the engine whilst I took a step back and cracked on with making us a YouTube channel. I've been editing all day and I'm exhausted. Follow our YouTube channel, Saving One Punch. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, hit that alert button and you'll see us coming. <laughs> Love it.